Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, the SPC Tutorials. As you all know, my name is Mr. SPC or Tutor Joseph. In today's class, we shall be answering some questions on gas laws. If you know you haven't watched the previous videos on this topic, I will advise you to do so, okay? Now, we have three questions on the board that we are to uh, answer. And once we are done tackling these questions, we start uh, calculating uh, some striking questions, all right? First one says, ideal gas equation is a combination of dash laws. 95% students, once they see this kind of question, they are in a hurry to picking options. Yes, I know that most of you must have uh, uh, picked a boy's law in child's law. Please do not do that. It can lead to accident. Please, ideal gas equation is a combination of Charles Law, Boyce Law, and Avogadro's Law. C. Yes, watch the previous video. I cannot have time analyzing all these options. That will take our time right now. So just note that ideal gas equation comprises three laws. Charles Law, Boyce Law, and what? Avogadro's Law. I think it shocked you a bit. I know it shocked you. Number two, general gas equation is a combination of dash. Uh -huh, yes, you cannot pick Boyce law and Charles law. So the answer to, to question one is C, and to question two is what? A. Number three, at what condition do real gases deviate from ideal gases? Please, at high pressure and low temperature, real gases deviate from ideal gases. Gases and so some, some of us are asking me right now, so why is it why is it so? No, normally the force of attraction found in gases is negligible, that is, it is insignificant because of the forces, because of the weak force of attraction that bind the molecules of gases together, they have the ability to move freely, randomly, but by the walls of the container in which they are found because of the weak force of attraction. The force that binds the molecules together and that is it is negligible. In other words, to say it is not what significant, they move freely. But at high pressure, what happens? High pressure, for there to be high pressure, there has to be what low, which means high pressure is concerned with what low volume. Increasing pressure is in that is, is inverse proportional to what low low in what volume when the volume is reduced the pressure increases but when the pressure increases the volume decreases so decrease in volume result of what increase in pressure so at high pressure when the volume is reduced when the volume is reduced the molecules of gases are joined together they cannot move freely anymore all right so that is why at low pressure uh low volume you say okay high pressure reduced volume and low temperature they deviate from ideal they deviate from what ideal gases so that is for that please be careful be careful take note of these questions it is not all about calculations 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 at least you should also be able to do justice to other parts that don't require calculations, okay? So, number one, if, if gas X diffuses six times, six times as fast as gas Y, if the relative molecular mass of x is 32 if the relative molecular mass of x is 32 what is the relative molecular mass of weight in y what is the relative molecular mass of what y we are talking of diffusion graham's law of diffusion which states that the rate at constant temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of gases is inversely proportional to the square of what? The vapor density, all right? So it means that the rate of X over the rate of Y is equals the relative molecular mass of Y 
over relative molecular mass of what? X. They must tally, alright? Take note of that. I will assume that gas Y, they said, if gas S that uses six times as gas, as fast as gas Y, which means that gas Y only diffused once. Hmm? It diffused just once. But they said gas Y diffused six times as what? Gas Y. Which means that X diffused six times one, and that will give me what? Six Y. As fast as gas Y. So from what I have here, don't forget this one is for Y and this one is for what? X. Therefore, Rx becomes what? 6y over y equals the relative molecular mass of y is what we are looking for, but the said x is what? 32. So this cannot go into the straw first. True. So 6 is equals, okay, uh, I will have to square both sides, all right? If I should square both sides, hmm, it means that two, these two cancel out these roots. Then you have to let 6 times 6, I have 36 equals y over what? 32. So from here, I will cross multiply. If I should cross multiply, it becomes y times 1 is y equals 36 times 32. 2 times 8, 2 times 6, 12, right? 2 carry 1, 2 times 3, 6, 7, 3 times 6, 18, 8 carry 1, 3 times 3, 9, plus that one, 10. I'll have, uh, guys, you have three. Okay. I have two. Uh, seven plus uh, eight is what? Uh, Fifteen. Then, that's eleven, five, two gram. Which means one thousand, one hundred fifty-two gram. All right, let me confirm this by punching my calculator. So, thirty-six times. 32 equals 1152 grams. So this is the final answer. If gas S diffuses six times as fast as gas Y, gas Y diffused just once. But gas S diffused six times. So which means that six times Y. Now what? It's just like saying six times one Y. It seems as well six Y. And that is what I have here. It is very easy. So let us let me give you another one before I'll give you an exercise to solve. Then on the comment section, you drop your answer. Okay. Number two. If gas A diffused 30 times, if gas A diffused 30 times. And gas B diffused as diffused uh, to fifth to fifth of gas A diffused to fifth of gas A. If the relative molecular mass of of uh, A is uh, let me ask, okay, is is uh, twenty four is twenty four. What is the relative molecular mass of waiting B? What is the relative molecular mass of B? You know what to do, don't you? So it becomes rates of A over rates of B equals relative molecular mass of B over relative molecular mass of waiting A. Gas A diffused six times. So gas A diffused how many times? Okay, 30 times. And gas B diffused to fifth of gas A. Now gas B that used to fit of gas A. That is 2 over 5 of, of times, right? 30. You see that? So over 1. So what? 5 into 5. We have 5 into 5 is 1, right? 5 into 30. That is what? 6. Which means that 
the rate of b is equals what? 12. Mm -hmm. What do you, that is not the final answer. It means the rate of b now is 12, and of course the rate of b is what? 30. So you cannot slot in your parameters. So rate of a here is what? 30. The rate of b is what? 12 equals the little molecular mass of b was given us nothing. That's what we are looking for. A was given us what? 12. So let us divide. 2 into 15 is 2 into 30 is 15. 2 into 2 into 6. 2 into 12 is what? 6. Right? 2 into 6 is 2. 3 into 15 is what? 5. It therefore means you have 5 over 2 equals for me to cancel out this square root, I will have to square both sides. If I should square both sides, if I should square both sides, it means I'll have it like this. So these two we cancel out these two. The 5 times 5 is what? 25. 2 times 2, I have 4 equals b over weighting 24. Therefore, b, that is the rate of b, that is the little molecular mass of b now, is equals 24 times 25 divided by weighting 4. So 24 times 25 equals 600. So 600 divided by 4 equals 150. Therefore, means that the relative molecular mass of B now is what? 150 gram. 150 gram. 150 gram. So I believe it is clear enough, all right? So I think at this point, should I give us something to do? Should I give us something to do? Uh, let, let me give us some to do. I should take this one again. I should explain, okay? If gas A diffused how many times? 30 times. And gas B diffused to fifth of gas what? A. That is 2 over 5. You have this times A is what? 60, right? So 60 divided by 60 divided by 5. You have what? 12, right? So you need 12 divided by. Or if I don't I'll just say 2 into 6, 2 into 26, 2 into this is 15, 3 into uh, 6 is 2, 3 into 5, 15 is what? 5. But you have square root here, you square both sides. In squaring both sides, it means that the 2 here, just as I have here, so 5 times 5, 25, 2 times 2, 4. Alright? And you now have these two affecting the square root, so you have this. From here, what do you do? You say, 25 times 24 divided by what? 4. You have what? 25 times 24 equals 600. So 600 divided by 4, I'll have what? 150 gram. So let me give you what to do. If gas A diffuses, like you drop your answer on the comment section, everybody you must do it. It is willy nilly. If gas A diffuses, diffuses, uh, Um, 80 times and gas B that uses uh, four fifth of gas A. If the little molecular mass of A is 172, what is the little molecular mass of B? So at this point, we call it a day. If you have learned something, please endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Do have a wonderful day.